Hi, this is Peter from Anatomy Zone and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the anatomy of the viscerocranium. We have previously taken a look at the anatomy of the calvaria and in this tutorial we'll be learning about the bones which make up the viscerocranium, also known as the facial skeleton. Embryologically, the viscerocranium is mainly developed in the mesenchyme of the embryonic pharyngeal arches. The bones which form the viscerocranium consist of bones which surround the facial viscera, so around the nose, the eyes and the mouth. The facial skeleton is comprised of several bones. The nasal bones, the maxillae, the inferior nasal conchae, the voma, the lacrimal bones, the zygomatic bones, and the palatine bones. All of these bones are paired apart from the voma. The mandible is generally considered separately from the cranium, and we'll discuss this separately in another tutorial. There is some overlap with the bones of the neurocranium, and some references will include parts of the sphenoid and ethmoid bones within the viscerocranium, as they form part of the structures of the orbits and nasal cavities. We'll cover the anatomy of the orbits and nasal cavities in separate tutorials. Let's now take a look at how these bones are connected and at some of their key features. Starting from an anterior view of the skull, in the midline we have the nasal bones, which articulate with each other via the internasal suture. This point here is nasion, which is the intersection of the frontal and nasal bones. The articulation with the frontal bone is via the frontonasal suture. Inferior to the nasal bones is the piriform aperture which is the pear-shaped anterior nasal opening into the cranium. This is bounded by the inferior margin of the nasal bone superiorly, the nasal surfaces of the maxillae on either side, and inferiorly by the anterior nasal spine in the midline, where the maxillae come together. Looking anteriorly through this aperture and zooming in a little bit, we can see the bony nasal septum, which divides the nasal cavity. I've just removed a few of the outer bones and rotated to an oblique lateral view, and we can see that the nasal septum contains a bony component and a cartilaginous component. The bony component is actually comprised of three bones, the perpendicular plate of ethmoid, the voma, and the maxillary crest, which isn't shown here. Returning to the anterior view, these curved bones are known as the nasal conchi. There are three paired nasal conchi within the nose, but it is the inferior nasal conchi that are considered as part of the facial skeleton. The middle and superior conchi arise from the ethmoid bone, which forms part of the neurocranium. The maxilla forms the upper jaw. The maxillary alveolus contains tooth sockets, which house the maxillary teeth. The two maxillary bones join together in the midline at the intermaxillary suture. The maxilla contains a small foramen, the infraorbital foramen, which transmits the infraorbital nerve and vessels. Fractures of the orbital floor involving the maxilla can easily involve this foramen and compromise these structures. The superior projection of the maxilla is known as the frontal process of the maxilla and articulates with the frontal bone superiorly at the frontomaxillary suture and medially with the nasal bones at the nasomaxillary suture. I've rotated to a lateral view and we can see into the medial wall of the orbit. These small paired bones are the lacrimal bones. Next, we have the zygomatic bones. You can see that laterally the maxillae articulates with the zygomatic bones on either side at the zygomatico-maxillary sutures. The zygomatic bones form the prominences of the cheekbones that you can see and easily palpate. I've rotated the model around to a lateral view, and if I zoom in here, you can see this small foramen known as the zygomatico-facial foramen, which transmits the zygomatico-facial nerve and vessels. This nerve is a small branch of the zygomatic nerve, which itself comes from the maxillary nerve, the second branch of the trigeminal, cranial nerve number five. Superiorly, the zygomatic bone articulates with the frontal bone 
by the frontal process of the zygomatic bone at the frontozygomatic suture. Posteriorly, it articulates with the temporal bone via the temporal process of the zygomatic bone at the zygomaticotemporal suture. These two components, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone and the temporal process of the zygomatic bone, form the zygomatic arch. I've just rotated to an inferior view and removed the mandible looking at the skull base, and you can really appreciate the morphology of this arch. It is susceptible to injury via direct blows, particularly due to its weak point at the suture. Injury to the zygomatic arch forms one aspect of a zygomatico-maxillary complex fracture, also known as a tripod fracture, which additionally includes fractures of the lateral orbital rim and the inferior orbital rim. You can see that within the posterior aspect of the orbit, the zygomatic bones articulate with the sphenoid bone at the sphenozygomatic suture. Let's rotate to an inferior view and take a look at the last few components of the facial skeleton. I've removed the mandible for better visualization and we're looking at the inferior aspect of the maxilla. We can see the hard palate, which is formed of the palatine processes of the maxillae anteriorly and the horizontal plates of the palatine bone posteriorly. A small depression in the midline anteriorly is known as the incisive foramen, where the incisive canals open. The posterior nasal spine is formed by the posterior projection of the hard palate. I've removed the bones of the neurocranium, and if we look posteriorly at the nasal cavity, just posterior and superior to the palatine bones, we have the final bone, the unpaired voma. We already saw this from the anterior view through the piriform aperture. The voma separates the posterior nasal apertures, known as the coani, which is where the nasal cavity opens into the nasopharynx. So that's the anatomy of the facial skeleton. If you have found this video helpful, please hit the like button, and if you would like to support our ongoing free anatomy video project, please head over to our Patreon page and check out the options. Thank you for watching.